I love about uh, visiting with Dr. Axel Mulder and Schlager of the Calgary Zoo as we learn how we are connected to the world through our zoo in so many different ways. Some of the creatures are neat and impressive. The hippos, I know, in uh, in Africa that mm-hmm. we've been involved with for many, many years. That's cool to see. Hippos, you can immediately say, yeah, it's a cool animal, and we're helping them in the wild. How about geckos and skinks on Christmas Island? Dr. Axel joins us this morning to talk about that. Good morning to you. Good morning. You love geckos and skinks as much as every other creature, don't you? They're important. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> They're important, aren't That's they? That's exciting. <laughs> Chris, I keep getting Christmas Island mixed up with Easter Island. This isn't with the big heads on it, right? <laughs> no, no. no. This is with the little <laughs> elves that make toys. Everybody <laughs> knows that. Yeah, the toys are, you know, <laughs> elves are a huge problem for skinks. That's it. Yeah. Uh, we'll talk about the elves another day. But in this case, how are we helping in that part of the world? Yeah, so uh, it's a, in a roundabout but very powerful way. It's through an organization called the IUCN, the International Union for the Conservation of Nature. And it's the most powerful organization environmentally in the world. It's headquartered out of Switzerland. It's the only environmental group that actually has a seat at the United Nations. It's actually the one that gives us the criteria by which we evaluate in Canada whether species are threatened or endangered or of special concern here as well. And so uh, with the IUCN, I have the privilege of chairing a group called the Conservation Translocation Specialist Group which looks at how to bring species back that have disappeared from certain places, all right? And so uh, this has now just, you know, exerted itself in so many ways. The techniques that we use are being used for thousands of species all over the world. So even on Christmas Island or on tigers in Cambodia, like just imagine, for instance, okay, I'm going to put you in the hot seat. Imagine that you're in charge of trying to decide if tigers should be brought back to Cambodia and Vietnam. And... um, and there are organizations that, that want to do that because they want to help tigers. But there are people, too, that are worried, right? Because... It's got to be the balance, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. And so what if they eat the livestock or what if they threaten people? So within the IUCN, we've developed guidelines um, that help you basically assess how that's done. And those guidelines are incorporated now into government policy all over the world, even in Canada. And so we've put together training programs by which we help government officials, professors, everything like that to help species all over. And so when you're talking about the species that you were mentioning earlier, we've been helping and training people with skinks on Christmas Island or Ecuador, you know, the jaguar situation or the tigers. And so it gives us an incredibly powerful reach to make a difference. How, how do you decide which of these animals are the ones that you need to focus on then? Yeah, it's basically we, we respond to the needs of the different countries. And uh, so... For instance, like last year, I would get letters from different government organizations, for instance, in Argentina or in Austria that say, please help us. Like in a couple of weeks, I'll actually be uh, in Guam helping the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service to look at a species, bring back a species that's been extinct in the wild for 30 years. And I'll be going on to the U.K. to help uh, U.K. government officials in terms of, you know, different programs that they have. For instance, one of the ones that we've been helping on is bringing back a cat, the only native cat to the UK called the Scottish Wildcat. Wow. And of that, there, there's fewer than 200 left in the world. Really? Mm-hmm. I mean, we, with the Fisher release we talked about yeah, not right. too long ago. Okay. So that's the culmination of it all, right? You make the decision, you start the process, then you re-release or release them in the areas they were and, and watch to see, right? Yeah, and basically there's a, exactly, and there's this incredible connection. The, the support of the community here in Calgary has allowed us to help many Canadian species, right? And that has given us the credibility to be recognized on a world stage and has put us into this situation now where we have really a leadership role, right? And that now brings us back home again, gives us even more credibility here. So when we can tell the story here about our role here, about the world, uh, you know, internationally and how we help, that's an in- incredibly powerful synergy. It's a powerful synergy. Uh, great to have you in. We brought you in here for a couple of reasons. We love to visit, of course, on our monthly Zoo Newses. But also, it's the last time we're going to have a chance to chat with Trish Exton Parter. Speaking of spreading the word, mm-hmm. she has been the, the zoo girl, if you will, for the last 30 years at the Calgary Zoo. Way back when you were just Trish Exton, mm-hmm. and then you became Parter. Uh, but you have been a stalwart at the zoo in so many different capacities, but sharing the love. There's a picture, I think, still on your desk of you. How old were you looking up at the giraffes that your dad took, I think, oh. uh, of the zoo? Yeah, I was about four. 
holding my granny's old. hand, and it was the old large mammal building. And uh, yeah, it was just the early days of visiting the zoo with was family. Was that where the magic began for you, that's do you think? probably where it all began, Amazing. did I know back then. Yeah, yeah, it's been a long, for 34 years, a career, not a job. A career, and, not uh, a job. Yeah. What are you thinking of uh, as you say the end of the month will be your last day? Uh, what, can you reflect on a moment or moments of the zoo that really uh, come to mind? You know, there's so many that it's, you know, going to have to be in some kind of a book, I think. I'm gonna Which be is a great idea. It just may happen, right? I think I'm going to call it, um, there's a bongo at my window, so stay <laughs> tuned for that story. <laughs> True story. Um, but you know what? It's uh, it, to, to be in communications and find an organization where you have powerful stories to tell. That's the secret. And, you know, when I talk to journalism students and they're figuring out where they want to be and what environments they want to be, and I say, find a place that, you know, you can tell the stories, be it challenging ones or celebrations. Because if you're the spokesperson, you need to have the heart in it. And I've been so fortunate to be that person for so many years to be able to bring in people like Axel our keepers, our veterinarians, um, our event coordinators, and, and have those folks up front and center to talk about what's happening at the zoo. So at a time that's very bittersweet for me, um, having told those stories and know that I've done my little part to uh, profile this organization that's just going great guns forward. It's Hasn't an been honor. a little part. I was going to say, about heart. that's a big part, Trish. I mean, anybody who has worked in the media in the city knows you and you have been such a great proponent and spokesperson for the zoo, for the people and the front lines of the zoo, for the people behind the scenes and just pushing that and making it such a wonderful place and world renowned. So it's not been a small part whatsoever. Well, Thank you. And, you know, it's, I've always hung on to the media relations part of this job. And, um, you know, I think it's understanding the good work that you guys do to help us spread that, that, that it's relationships, right? Like we all have these great relationships and that's what it's all about. You've made it easy and, for uh, us. And it's all about the cake too. So we yeah. have a special oh little goodness. presentation for you. Uh, take a look at this. <laughs> I hope you are absolutely <laughs> looks like blown me. away. It is you. Yeah, not the outfit. Yeah. Tarzan-ish. Well, uh, once, once so, you've oh, retired you from the amazing. zoo, you can wear that outfit every day. I, it's, a, it's fascinating. Isn't that's, it? Yeah. It's, yeah. it's Trish that's swinging you. on a vine like Tarzan, like Jane probably. <laughs> yeah. Pandas yeah. and giraffes and bears, oh my. Uh, so <laughs> that's wonderful, you guys. Thank you for uh, the gift oh. of, first of all, being a friend because uh, we're dear yes, friends. friends. But for, sure. for the gift of uh, sharing and, and opening our imagination. Mm -hmm. because Axel does a great job of taking us to other parts of the world. Brian Keating does a wonderful job. Uh, there are so many great spokespeople at the zoo, but uh, it all comes and all for 34 years now has come in some respect through you. So uh, thanks for the connections and good luck with retirement. Thank you. And this has been a real pleasure. Thanks for everything. Uh, it, it won't be goodbye. Guys. We'll, we'll oh, yeah. perhaps be tracking you down and harassing you to come and chat with us another time well, for, do. for any kind of topic. So I'm because not we bench. love we love talking to you and you you're just you're such a pleasure to have around. So thank you so much for everything. Thanks. Thanks Axel, everything. we'll have to book you with somebody else for next month. <laughs> but we look forward to that. We'll find a way. <laughs> we'll find a way. Uh, thanks for both coming in and congratulations again, Trish.